Hello, and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council's regular meeting for Tuesday, October 8th, 2019. My name is Kim Clark Baskin, and I'm the Deputy City Clerk. With us today, we have our sign language interpreter, Logan Showalter. The following is a list of legislation to be introduced by Pittsburgh City Council. Councilman Ricky Burgess presents Bill Number 2136, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in the amount of $47,000 in favor of Daniel Adelman and his attorney in full and final settlement of a litigation filed in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Bill Number 2137, resolution authorizing, pursuant to Chapter 210, acceptance of gifts to the city of the city code, the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Safety to accept a donation from Ramon Foster of $9,500 to assist the City of Pittsburgh Bureau of Police with reestablishing the mounted unit. Bill number 2138, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of finance to execute an agreement of sale in all related documents necessary to effect the purchase by the city of Pittsburgh in lieu of taking by eminent domain of 35 and 33 Semisir Street in the 26th Ward and to accept a deed for the properties further authorizing the expenditure of funds for the purchase, closing, and other associated auxiliary costs. Councilwoman Deb Gross presents Bill Number 2140, Resolution Amending Resolution 121 of 2019, approved February 19, 2019, providing for the implementation of a residential sticker parking permit program in the Beachview neighborhood pursuant to Pittsburgh Code Chapter 549, so as to amend the streets and remove addresses included in Area T. Bill number 2141, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of city planning to enter into a fellowship participation agreement in the University of Pittsburgh, cost not to exceed $3,600 for fiscal year 2019. Bill number 2142, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of city planning to enter into a fellowship participation agreement with Coro Pittsburgh, Cost not to exceed $9,750 for the fiscal year 2019. Councilwoman Darlene Harris presents Bill Number 2139, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Human Resources and Civil Services to enter into an agreement with Highmark, UPMC, and Aetna for services relating to the provision of health care benefits through, two, through December 31st, 2022, and for the payment of the costs thereof. Councilman Daniel Lavelle presents Bill Number 2143, Resolution Authorizing the City to Purchase Automated External Defibrillators and Heart Monitors from Zoll Medical Corporation at an overall cost not to exceed $3,097,690. Bill number 2144, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Safety to execute relevant agreements to receive grant funding from the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquencies Gun Violence Reduction Initiative to add Operation Ceasefire, outreach workers, and provide training 
and further providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. Bill number 2160. Resolution further amending resolution number 863 of 2018, effective January 1, 2019, as amended, entitled, Resolution Adopting and Approving the 2019 Capital Budget and the 2019 Community Development Block Grant Program and the 2019 through 2024 Capital Improvement Program by reducing Children to Champions, North Shore Stallions by $12,500 and increasing Northside Youth Athletic Association by $12,500. This bill is sponsored by Councilman Daniel Lavelle. Councilman Corey O'Connor presents bill number 2145. Resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewage Facilities Plan for West Jefferson Residential Development at 514 West Jefferson Streets. Councilwoman Teresa Kell Smith presents Bill Number 2146. Resolution authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Public Works on behalf of the City of Pittsburgh to enter into an agreement or the use of existing agreements with Enel X North America Inc. for energy consultant services in connection with the City's aggregated purchase of electricity along with other members of the Western Pennsylvania Energy Consortium. Bill number 2147, resolution finally locating right of ways and accepting the dedication of roadways, which are part of the Convention Center Roadway Improvements Phase 1 through Phase 3, and vacating portion of 10th Street adjacent to the David L. Lawrence Convention Center, no longer used for roadway purposes. Bill number 2148, resolution granting unto Pittsburgh Public School Langley at 2940 Sheridan Boulevard, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct maintain and use at their own cost and expense protective railing at 2940 Sheridan Boulevard in the 20th Ward, 2nd Council District. Bill number 2149, resolution granting unto Pedantic LLC, their successors and assigns, the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense a canopy covered entrance ramp and stoop at 5226 and 5230 Penn Avenue in the 8th Ward, 9th Council District. Bill number 2150, resolution granting unto UPMC Mercy, 1400 Locust Street their successors and assigns, the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense an aerial pedestrian bridge over the right of way to connect UPMC's new vision center to their existing UPMC Mercy Hospital facility at Marion Street in the first ward, sixth council district. Bill number 2151. Resolution granting unto UPMC Mercy, 1400 Locust Street, their successors and assigns, the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, a utility tunnel connection from proposed building to existed underground utilities, as well as placing tree pits at 1622 Locust Street in the first ward, 6th Council District. Bill number 2152, resolution granting unto Scott P. 
Pipitone, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense an access platform entrance, a bike rack, and to relocate a tree bed at 3933 Perrysville Avenue in the 26th Ward, 6th Council District. Bill number 2153, resolution granting unto Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh, LP, BH, care of Ron Graziano, their successors and assigns, the license and privilege to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, a new canopy, a new sign, and protective bollards at 4724 Bomb Boulevard, in the 8th Ward, 7th Council District. Bill number 2154, resolution granting under Nicola DCO at 2515 Penn Avenue, their successors and assigns, the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense an ADA entrance ramp at 2515 Penn Avenue in the second ward, 7th Council District. Bill number 2155, resolution granting unto one point one yoga at 5019 Penn Avenue, their successors and assigns, the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense an ADA entrance ramp at 5019 Penn Avenue in the 10th Ward, 9th Council District. Councilwoman Erica Strasberger presents Bill Number 2156, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Public Works and the Director of the Department of Innovation and Performance to enter into an amended agreement or agreements with Cartograph Systems, Inc. in order to continue licensing application software and for the purpose of associated subscription, maintenance, cloud hosting, and professional services. Council President Bruce Krause presents Bill Number 2157, Communication from Kevin Paulus, Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting acting pay approvals on behalf of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure for Donisha Myers and Kristen Saunders, and on behalf of the Department of Public Works for Tyrone Clark, per the acting pay policy revised in June 2018. Bill number 2158. Communication from David Hutchinson, Acting Director of the Office of Management and Budget submitting acting pay approvals on behalf of the Department of Public Safety for Donna Harper per the acting pay policy revised in June 2018. Bill number 2159. Communication from Kevin Paulus, Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting a 3000 $313 donation on behalf of in and out Valet Company for the Public Safety Mounted Police Unit. That concludes the reading of the legislation. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of Pittsburgh City Council for today, Tuesday, October the 8th, 2019. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Here. Mr. Coghill. Ms. Gross. Here. Mrs. Harris. Here. Mr. Lavelle. Here. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kilsmith. Here. Mrs. Strasburger. Here. Mr. Krause, President. Here.
Seven members present. Thank you very much. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. This morning, the Council is offering up a special resolution commemorating the 11 lives that were lost on October 27th, 2018 from the Tree of Life, Dor Hadash, and New, Life, New Light Synagogues. I would like to begin by offering up a statement from Councilman O'Connor. As we remember the survivors and the injured and thank all who helped on that tragic day last October, I ask that you think about the Hebrew word high. That means living, because Hebrew also assigns the numerological equivalent of 18. I ask that we would please observe 18 seconds of silence as we move towards the future and continue to heal as a community. Thank you. I would now like to introduce the mayor. If you would join me on the dais, please, and Councilwoman Strasburger, as I believe you have special guests this morning. Good morning, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before I turn it over to the Councilwoman, I just want to take a moment. Uh, we are coming up on the one-year anniversary of October 27th. Uh, one of the darkest days of our city's history. We came together as a city in those moments afterward. It was standing out on that cold day with the rain coming down and looking across the corner and seeing the executive board of the Islamic Center standing outside of the Tree of Life, being there as part of one community of Pittsburgh that needed to be there for their neighbors. It was the Monday afternoon around the close of school, driving back and walking down the street in Squirrel Hill when a minivan stops in the middle of the street and a young man, probably seventh or eighth grade, runs out with a glass vase with fresh flowers and hands it to me. And I ask, what's this for? And he said, you're my neighbor. I love you. And stopping that minivan and looking in that front seat and seeing his mother with an entire front of her car filled with glass vases with flowers to hand out to her neighbors. In the darkest time of our city, there were little shimmers of light, light that shined through evil, light that was a part of connecting all of us, light that helped those families going through the tragedy that no one should ever have to go through. And that light was the strongest part of Pittsburgh. So as we come to this anniversary, let us look for that light because it's always there. It's always around us. And it shouldn't be only during the darkest times that we can see it. If Anyone who is here for the resolution who would like to come up and, and join us and stand up here with us um, uh, would come now. I would greatly appreciate it.
So today we are, um, we are here to designate October 27th as Remember Repair Together Day. On October 27th, 2018, hateful violence struck Pittsburgh's Squirrel Hill neighborhood. And I think as we all remember, the entire community, Squirrel Hill, Pittsburgh, the country, and the world mourned with us. It was an incredibly powerful show of uh, respect, reverence, and um, neighborly love. Because truly, we, to be a neighbor, as um, I've heard it be, be said before, we need to change it and shift the definition of a neighbor from a geographic to a moral imperative and concept. And as we are coming up on this one year mark, um, we must remember the tragedy, the loss of 11 souls, and those who were forever affected, the ripple effects that, um, and the impact that it has on our greater community. But I hope that we can also continue to celebrate their lives, their contributions to the community, the family and friends who love them, and remember how much support we continue to receive from the Pittsburgh community, from the state of Pennsylvania, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, from really the entire world. And that we have neighbors who are thinking of us and love us. It's going to be a difficult um, couple of weeks. And I, I want to remind everyone to take care of yourselves. Reach out to your friends and family. Reach out to your neighbors. Make sure that everyone's OK. Um, because it will, be, it will be difficult for many, many people, um, including those who, many who are here today. I want to thank the mayor for his steadfast support and uh, always representing Pittsburgh and, and the Squirrel Hill community so, so honorably um, and from, for his words today. And for Councilman O'Connor, who I know wanted to be here today, couldn't, and has, has been a, a partner in representing Squirrel Hill with, along with me. Um, I wanted to just say those quick few words. Um, I also would be remiss if I didn't mention that we've had an incredible amount of support from Representative Dan Frankel, who has a representative here today, and, uh, and from um, Public Safety as well, who has been incredible, incredibly strong in, um, in, the, in this last year in supporting uh, the community. Um, for anyone who would like to, who's here, would anyone like to say a word or two? No. Is there anyone who would like to? OK. Um, with that, I will turn it back over to President of Council so that we can actually enact this resolution, which will um, dedicate in perpetuity October 27th as Remember Repair Together Day. So Council President Krauss, I'll have you come back up again so we can vote on this. this yeah. I'd be happy to so now for therefore be it resolved that this council of the city of Pittsburgh does hereby re enact the following the city of Pittsburgh hereby declares October 27th as remember repair together day in perpetuity and honors the 11 Pittsburghers who lost their lives and made significant contributions to their communities May I please have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. Would you like to close it out? I'll just close by um, recognizing the strength of the people who stand up here with me today and those who cannot be up here um, standing with me. Uh, it's it takes incredible st strength to have gotten through this past year. And um, I know we, we will all need to continue to support one another um, over this next few weeks, but also over the next year. And um, I know that there's also a strong desire to, to demonstrate that sort of support, not just um, throughout Squirrel Hill, but throughout the entire, um, throughout the entire city, because there were, there were many, many people who were there for us in Squirrel Hill. And I know there's a strong desire to uh, demonstrate that same, sort of, um, that same sort of strength and neighborly love throughout the entire city. So let's carry that in our hearts as we move forward. 
um, as this as this one year mark approaches. Thank you. Thank you to my colleagues for your support. Okay, Mayor, thank you. Councilwoman Strasberger, thank you. And uh, our deepest uh, condolences to our invited guests. Uh, with that, we will move on to proclamation uh, portion of the council meeting. We have one proclamation to be read into the record. It is presented by Councilman Coghill. Councilman Coghill presents now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby commend Julian Lalser Minara and be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Sunday, October 13th, 2019 to be Julian Lalser Minara Day in the City of Pittsburgh. Thank you, Madam Clerk. May I have a motion in a second, please? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Before I go into the public comment portion of the meeting, I'd just like to take a moment, let everyone find their way uh, and uh, uh, speak with one another. And then once they have, uh, we'll go into public comment. I don't need to sign that, do I? Thank you. I apologize. Thank you. Okay, I will now open it up uh, for public comment. Anyone wishing to speak before City Council this morning, of course, will have three minutes in which to do so. I would like to begin by reminding everyone that the rules of council are clear. When they state that comment is limited to matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which are at this time or could at another time come before the council, we do not permit profanity. We will maintain order at all times. I ask that you would please begin by giving your name and the neighborhood in which you reside for our public record. The green light will indicate the start of your three minutes. When the yellow light comes on, you'll have one minute to summarize your thoughts. When the red light comes on, your time will have expired. May we have our first speaker, please. May we have our first speaker, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, may I have a Sergeant at Arms close the door, please? Thank you. Okay, good morning, welcome. Good morning, my name is Bill Neal. I am the uh, President and CEO of Achieving Greatness Incorporated, formerly Champion Enterprises. I'm, uh, uh, proud and privileged to be before you once again uh, on behalf of one of our very special projects. I want to uh, once again acknowledge uh, Councilpersons Coghill, Lavelle, and Harris for their continued support of this particular uh, event, as well as Mayor Peduto, who has been supporting it uh, in conjunction with uh, Chief Executive Rich Fitzgerald. Uh, I speak to you each year, and now we're in our sixth year, believe it or not, of the establishment of the Pittsburgh 
City League High School All Sports Hall of Fame inductions. Uh, in the history of this city, some 200 years, in the history of the Board of Education, 190 plus years, it had never existed before. Uh, and uh, I gathered together some legends from the city of Pittsburgh five years ago, six years ago now, we established the first ever City League Hall of Fame inductions for the likes of Chuck Cooper, the first black man drafted in the NBA. Kenny Durrett voted the greatest basketball player in Western Pennsylvania history. Oren Richburg, Wesley Garnett, Jennifer Bruce, Mary Myers, uh, Darrell Porter, Rod Rutherford, an endless list of superstar names that are not only recognized here, but around the country, some globally. We've established a program that is unprecedented and historic and is anchored in our city's history now. It is a uh, housing for some of the greatest student athletes in the history of this city. We want to continue this effort, and by now most of you have I've been made aware of the pact that I left you last week to, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at details, uh, the project, the program, the effort, and our request for your continued financial support. We haven't asked much of any of you. We simply ask that each council person would donate $500 each year. This program sells out, thus the costs are greater. We've estimated, realistically, over 940000 over 940,000 potential people could be inducted in a City League Hall of Fame going back to 1930. If we took just 1,000 of those who would be the elite elite, we would be another 25 years inducting that many people with 20 people a year. Uh, it's, a, it's an unprecedented uh, uh, program that the city welcomes and appreciates and that's why it sells out every year. So we, once again, we ask for your support. Uh, we appreciate all that has been done from the city to help make this thing happen, but we've got so far to go in terms of being able to elevate it to national status. A gentleman that's gonna come up behind me spent 35 years in the Pittsburgh school system, and he can speak to the importance of such a program. So once again, on behalf of Achieving Greatness, our board, our committee, we thank you for your support. And I have Thanks, Mr. Neal. flyers, if I can leave with someone yep, to Yep, with the up. clerk. Thanks, Mr. Neal. Okay. okay, may we have our next guest, please? Good morning, sir. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Coach Fred Lucas. I've been in the uh, city athletic program, as he has stated, 35 years. I started on the junior high middle school level up to the high school coaching swimming basketball track football and also officiating the different sports and running summer programs my testimony here is ma mainly to the fact that this is something that was needed in the city we have they work as hard at their ath athletics as all the other outside districts we had uh, in 1980, they decided that the uh, city programs were inferior due to uh, equipment coaches. And they added two more football coaches. And this, to many people don't know, they put grass on all the city league fields along with the sprinkler so that that became the work of the day. Also, they have two all weather so that our kids could have the same training as the other districts. And as many of you know, in the major sports, in the major sports, you hear about basketball teams, Shenley basketball teams, Westinghouse football teams. That was real great before they had state championships. But my concern is the other sports, that neighborhoods, the way they are, the set is set up, you don't know, you don't know about what's being done unless it's particularly even ones in your own school. Your school's on in Homewood, your football game's on the south side. So that my point is this allows people in the city to recognize all these programs and we expanded it to include coaches, coaches in the uh, program. I'd like to say in closing, in closing, 
I'm just going to name a couple names that came out of the city that you may not have known. Bob Prince, the television radio announcer, was a diver at Shinley High School. Was a diver at Shinley High School. In fact, he used to uh, challenge people on that. And Bruno San Martino was a Shinley High School graduate. He wasn't that big at Shinley, but he grew up. These things like this, uh, this program allows these people to be, and other people from the district neighborhoods to be exposed to the same publicity that's available. And this is what our objective is. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Okay, may we have our next speaker, please? Good morning, Ms. Brown. Uh, every time he says it. And the reason why I keep saying it, he says good morning. You so just we think just that need he has respect for me. We need your and name. And then you, uh, my name is Yvonne F. Brown. And please, please, I wish he would stop saying good morning because he talks to me Can like a dog the time, afterwards. Please? I wish you would. And if you can't, why don't you let the pro temp uh, 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 bring me up? I'm upset because you know what? Mr. Burgess, and I was praying all the way down here not to get upset. But when you took, and my grandbabies got finished speaking, and you said, this is not the time and the place. My husband heard me say, but when the white children spoke, you never said that. I want you to realize that in the Bible it says, suffer little children, come unto me. And it also says, bring up a child in, that, in their ways and they won't depart. Part of the problem I have with you city council, especially Mr. Burgess, because he's supposed to be a reverend. He demands that he, we call him reverend. You know what? I was taught you give reverence to who deserves it. And he does not deserve it. Let me tell you why I'm so upset. I got these grandbabies. I got one that's 18. She grew up in here. She grew up in this place. She actually spoke. Now, that one 16, 14. And you he, he hear this black man tell them that their sisters are not welcome down here, that they don't belong down here. I'm trying to get these teachers. Look, when Governor Wolf, Governor Wolf came, when he was up at the Civic Arena, I came down with this sign. He came over and he asked, Miss Brown, may I have this sign? I said, no, I'm teaching my grandchildren how to fight for their rights and in a city and to use the democracy of speaking. I said, oh. He said, well, can I have a picture? I said, oh, I got a picture of the, I said, oh, I'm going to send a picture of the mayor giving me a kiss, and now a picture with you to my daughter in Georgia. He said he gave you a kiss. I said, yeah, but I had an old mom that was 92 and said, watch out, baby, because them politicians will kiss the dogs behind to get a vote. Governor Rich, <coughs> he said, Wolf said, no, no, but I know some that will. I demand that you do not ever say that again, that these children are not welcome. They didn't pay no attention. My babies know. They watch, been watching for years. Do you understand? That's why I'm saying something. They know that you can speak. And to have him saying that they can't, and he's a black man, a black man, a reverend. We're supposed to give reverence. Let me tell you, I do believe that Jesus is looking down. You may not ever talk again, and you tell a child, that this is not the time and the place. White children come up, never heard it. And I'm using white and black because the white people take their children. They took them to hangings. And maybe that's why we still suffer because they saw them kill black men. But my babies know that we can speak. We were going down, I told them, I said, I may not let you speak because Mr. Cross hollers at me. They said they wanted to speak. That's why I asked if they could, because they know it. Do you understand? I'm not wrong for bringing my babies down here or any other baby. Thank you, Ms. Brown. May we have our next speaker, please? Dr. Miller, looks like you're up. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Ronald and Miller, Bell Tuber and Homewood. I'm a proud descendant of Italian and German foreigners welcome foreigners to our city and to our country they make it stronger uh, the global intelligence society candidate for president 2020 association of american geographers 
Um, October 2019 is GIS-sponsored European Intelligence Month um, that goes with a copyright to me and to the GIS. Uh, Dr. Clarence Perry, English-American sociologist, Stanford, U.S. Immigration Service, and the New York City Urban Planning Commission, the author of the Neighborhood Unit, 1929, and other things after that. He's a leader, was a leader in all of this because the concern of this council is clearly our neighborhoods. U.S. citizens nationwide, I'm experiencing, say that they do not have the ability to regulate local, state, and, and national governments beyond our control, they say. Citizens in Pittsburgh and U.S. cities everywhere should, in my view, establish what I have advocated publicly since 2011, neighborhood governments under their control, sub-city, sub-district, micro-neighborhood governments. Um, no Pittsburgh uh, law prevents it, and the Constitution, Amendment 10, permits it. The people of any U.S. city, neighborhood, including Pittsburgh, should be able to establish their own neighborhood governments. Um, example, Homewood, uh, neighborhood unit one, subdividing a larger neighborhood into uh, smaller units, uh, not defined by the Pittsburgh city, but by them, um, and not by the Democratic Party um, ward frames. The HNU one, uh, in my view, could be around uh, CLP, Homewood, uh, Avenue 7101 Hamilton, um, 412-731-3080. The four areas would include one uh, south of Hamilton to the Bossway, west of Homewood Avenue to Myrtland, area two, uh, south of Hamilton to the Bossway, and east of Homewood to Collier and Richland, area three, north of um, Hamilton to Frankstown, and east of Homewood Avenue to Collier, and area four north of Hamilton to Frankstown, west um, of Homewood Avenue to um, Myrtland. We have the power, and the people in these neighborhoods have the power to create these neighborhood units. And I strongly advocate it. But it should not come from outside, not from a white man or woman, but from the people, whether it's Homewood or Shadyside or anywhere. Thanks, Dr. Miller. Okay. okay, we have our next speaker, please. We have our next speaker, please. Okay, seeing no further speakers, I will close the public comment portion of the council meeting. We'll proceed into presentation of papers. Our first, our first committee being our Committee on Finance and Law and our Chair, Councilman Burgess. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Reverend Burgess presents resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in the amount of $47,000 in favor of Daniel Adelman and his attorney, Stephen M. Barth, Esquire Barth and Associates in full and final settlement of a litigation filed in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Bill number 2137. Resolution authorizing pursuant to Chapter 10, acceptance of gifts to the city of the city code, the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Safety to accept a donation from Ramon Foster for $9,500 to assist the city of Pittsburgh Bureau of Police with reestablishing the mounted unit. And bill number 2138, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of finance to execute an agreement of sale and all related documents necessary to effect the purchase by the city of Pittsburgh in lieu of taking by eminent domain of 35 and 33 Cimicier Street in a 26 ward and to accept a deed for the properties, further authorizing the expenditure of funds for the purchase, closing, and other associated auxiliary costs. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Coghill, our Chair of Urban Recreation. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Gross, our Chair of Land Use and Economic Development. Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 2140. 
Resolution amending resolution number 121 of 2019, approved February 19, 2019, providing for the implementation of a residential sticker parking program in the Beachview community pursuant to Pittsburgh Code Chapter 549, so as to amend the streets and add addresses included in Area T. Bill number 2141, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of city planning to enter into a fellowship participation agreement and the University of Pittsburgh not to exceed $3,600 for fiscal year 2019. And bill number 2142, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of city planning to enter into a fellowship participation agreement with Coro Pittsburgh not to exceed $9,750 for fiscal year 2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Gross. Yes, Mr. President, the administration has requested that these appear on today's standing committee agenda. As you know, usually it's the next day, but that would be later today. Um, so I'll move to um, waive rule eight for bills 2141 and 2142. Thank you, Councilwoman. May I have a second? We have a second. Do we have discussion on the motion to waive the rules? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed abstention, seeing none. Uh, Councilwoman, thank you. Bills 21, 41, and 42 appear on this afternoon's standing committee agenda. Next, we have Councilwoman Harris, our Chair of Human Resources. Thank you, Mr. Krause. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Harris presents Bill number 2114. Resolution amending resolution number 742 of 2017, which authorized the city of Pittsburgh to enter into a professional <coughs> services agreement with P&A Group for services relating to the administration of the city of Pittsburgh's Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act, also known as COBRA program, by increasing the authorized spending amount by $90,000. And bill number 2115, resolution providing that the city of Pittsburgh enter into a memorandum of agreement and or contract with the Corporation for National and Community Service for the purpose of obtaining AmeriCorps VISTA members to work with staff from city departments and a housing authority city of Pittsburgh on strategic projects and research, costs not to exceed $72,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Lavelle, our Chair of Public Safety Services. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Lavelle presents bill number 2143, resolution authorizing the city to purchase automated external defibrillators and heart monitors from Zoll Medical Corporation at an overall cost not to exceed $3,097,690. Bill number 2144, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Public Safety to execute relevant agreements to receive grant funding from the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquencies Gun Violence Reduction Initiative to add Operation Ceasefire Outreach Workers and provide training and further providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. And Bill number 2160, resolution further amending resolution number 863 of 2018, effective January 2019, as amended entitled, Resolution adopting and approving the 2019 capital budget and the 2019 Community Development Block Grant Program and the 2019 through 2024 capital improvement program by reducing children to champions north shore stallions by twelve thousand five hundred dollars increasing north side youth athletic association by twelve thousand five hundred dollars and authorizing a subsequent agreement for operational administrative expenses maintenance purchase of equipment and or rehabilitation of neighborhood facilities on behalf of the residents of the city thank you madam clerk Councilman O'Connor, our Chair of Intergovernmental Affairs, and I have Councilman uh, Lavelle for Councilman O'Connor. President? Yep, thank you, Councilman. Councilman O'Connor presents Bill Number 2145. Resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewage Facilities Plan for West Jefferson Residential Development at 514 West Jefferson Street and Bill Number 2161. Resolution amending Resolution Number 611 of 2019, previously amended by Resolution 448 of 2019, 
authorizing the City of Pittsburgh to enter into an agreement to execute the Alcasan Service Agreement Amendment by and among the Allegheny County Sanitary Authority, the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority, the Western Westmoreland Municipal Authority, the North Huntington Township Municipal Authority, the Township of North Huntington, the Penn Township Sewage Authority, and the Township of Penn regarding the Cavittsville or Dara area. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman? Uh, motion to waive rule eight on bill 2161 so it'll appear on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. Thank you. We have a motion to <laughs> waive the rules on 2161. May I please have a second? Second. Okay. This afternoon, I'm sorry. It's fine. Okay. Do I have a second, please? Second. 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 It's discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Uh, abstentions, uh, 2161 will also be added to this afternoon. Abstention. Okay, we have a abstention. Um, anyway, 2161 will be um, added to this afternoon's standing committee agenda. Uh, next, we have Councilwoman Kill Smith, our Chair of Public Works Services. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank You're you, busy, Mr. Councilwoman. Uh, no, not me. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Teresa Kell Smith presents bill number 2146, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works on behalf of the city of Pittsburgh to enter into an agreement or use of existing agreements with Enel X North America Inc. for energy consultant services in connection with the city's aggregated purchase of electricity along with other members of the Western Pennsylvania Energy Consortium. Bill number 2147. Resolution finally locating right of ways and accepting the dedication of roadways, which are part of the Convention Center Roadway Improvements Phases 1 through 3, and vacating portion of Tim Street adjacent to the David L. Lawrence Convention Center, no longer used for roadway purposes. Bill number 2148, resolution granting under Pittsburgh Public School Langley 2940 Sheridan Boulevard, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense a safety railing at 2940 Sheridan Boulevard, 6th Ward, 7th Council District. Bill number 2149, resolution granting unto Pedantic LLC Henry Simons, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense a canopy covered entrance ramp and stoop at 5226 and 5230 Penn Avenue in the 8th Ward, 9th Council District. Bill number 2150. Resolution granting unto UPMC Mercy their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense an aerial pedestrian bridge over the right of way to connect UPMC's New Vision Center to the existing UPMC Mercy Hospital facility at Marlin Street in the First Ward in the Sixth Council District. Bill number 2151. Resolution granting unto UPMC Mercy, their successors and assigns, the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense a utility tunnel connection from proposed building to existing underground utilities, as well as placing tree pits at 1622 Locust Street in the First Ward, 6th Council District. Bill number 2152. Resolution granting unto Scott Pipitone, their successors and assigns, the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense an access platform entrance, a bike rack, and relocating a tree bed at 3933 Perrysville Avenue, 26th Ward, 6th Council District. Bill number 2153. Resolution granting unto Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh, LBPH, care of Ron Graziano, their successors and assigns, the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, a new canopy, a new sign, and protected ballards at 4724 Bomb Boulevard, 8th Ward, 7th Council District. Bill number 2154. Resolution granting unto <coughs> Nicola DCO 2515 Penn Avenue, their successors and assigns, the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, an 88 entrance ramp at 2515 Penn Avenue, 2nd Ward, 7th Council District, and Bill Number 2155. 
Resolution granting unto 1.1 1 .1 Yoga, 5019 Penn Avenue, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense an ADA accessible entrance ramp at 5019 Penn Avenue, 10th Ward, 9th Council District. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Strasberger, our Chair of Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Strasberger presents Bill Number 2156, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and the Director of Public Works and Director of Innovation and Performance to amend existing agreements with Cartograph Systems, Inc., entered into pursuant to Resolution Number 341 of 2016 to do the following. A, to adopt and extend the terms and conditions from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania co-stars existing agreement with Cartograph Systems, Inc. for an additional three years, and B, to add the Department of Innovation and Performance as a signatory and remove the Department of Finance as signatory. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The Chair has four communications, one from our City Controller, Michael Lamb, two from our Director of Office of Management and Budget, and one from our Acting Director of our Office of Management and Budget. I'll need a motion to receive and file once read. Thank you. Council President Bruce Cross presents Bill Number 2157, Communication from Kevin Paulos, Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting acting pay approvals on behalf of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure for Donisha Myers and Kristen Saunders, and on behalf of the Department of Public Works for Tyrone Clark per the acting pay policy revised in June 2018. Bill number 2158, communication from David Hutchinson, acting director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting acting pay approvals on behalf of the Department of Public Safety for Donna Harper, per the acting pay policy revised in June 2018. Bill number 2159, communication from Kevin Paulos, Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting a $3,313 donation on behalf of in and out Valet Company for the Public Safety Mounted Police Unit, and Bill number 2162, Communication from City Controller Michael Lamb submitting the city's single audit report for the year ended December 31st, 2018. Thank you, Madam Clerk. May I have a motion to receive and file, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions? <laughs> motion passes. Thank you very much. That moves us into unfinished business. And without unfinished business before the council, our next order of business will be reports of committee for final action. We will begin with our chair of the Committee of Finance and Law, Councilman Burgess. Thanks, Councilman. <clears throat> Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 2129, Report of the Committee on Finance and Law for October 2nd, 2019. Bill Number 2024. Resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of Curtin and Hefner, LLP, in an amount not to exceed $15,122.72 for professional legal services and expert advice regarding building owners and managers litigation. Bill number 2078. Resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an amendment to contribution agreement with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania acting through the Department of Transportation, the County of Allegheny, the Port Authority of Allegheny County, Holdings Acquisition Company, LP, and the Pittsburgh Steelers for the purpose of the city making final payments to the Commonwealth due towards projects related to proposed roadway infrastructure improvements on the city's North Shore, and further authorizing the city solicitor to enter into an amendment amended consent order to document any revised obligations consistent with this resolution. Bill number 2079, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Finance to enter into an agreement with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to be able to exchange data, no cost will be incurred. Bill number 2080, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Finance to enter into an agreement with Mar Dussel to provide auditing services to the city of Pittsburgh, total cost not to exceed $406,503 over three years with an option for two additional years. And bill number 2081, Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Finance to enter into an agreement with CSS Inc. for the provision of a business tax and revenue management software package for a sum not to exceed $5 million over five years and for the payment of the cost thereof. 
Thank you, Madam Clerk. You have heard the reading and the title of the bills under our Committee on Finance and Law. Further discussion begins with Councilman Burgess. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to recommit Bill 2081. I have talked to the administration and they are comfortable with its recommittal. Okay. Second. We have a second, a motion to recommit, and a second. Do we have further discussion on the motion to recommit? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, are we uh, required to do roll call on this? And Yeah, let's do roll call on this, and then we'll take the remaining votes. Thank you. Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Mrs. Kale Smith. Aye. Mrs. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Bill, then, having received the legally required number of votes, is officially recommitted, will appear on this afternoon's standing committee agenda. Is there further discussion on any of the other bills that are under our Committee on Finance and Law? Then, seeing no further discussion, these bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when their names are called. All those opposed will vote no. And would the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith. Aye. Mrs. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Kraus, President. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes, bills passed. Thank you very much. The bills having received then the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Our next committee is our Committee on Public Safety Services. Our chair is Councilman R. Daniel Lavelle. Mr. President. Thanks, Councilman. Councilman Lavelle presents Bill Number 2130, Report of the Committee on Public Safety Services for October 2nd, 2019. Bill Number 2084, Resolution authorizing the city to enter into a professional services agreement with the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center Presbyterian for the purchase of pharmaceutical supplies, medications, and related support services necessary for the daily operations of the city's Bureau of EMS for a period of four years commencing January 1, 2020 at an overall cost not to exceed $192,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of this bill under our Committee on Public Safety Services. Is there further discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And would the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith. Aye. Mrs. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes, bills passed. Thank you very much. The bills then, having received the legally required number of votes, have finally passed. Next, we have our Committee on Public Works Services. Our chairperson is Councilwoman Teresa Kilsmith. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Teresa Kell Smith presents Bill Number 2131, reported a committee on public works for October 2nd, 2019. Bill Number 2092, resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to apply for a grant from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Gaming Economic Development Fund for up to $500,000 to provide funding for the development of the West End Trolley Trail and should the grant be awarded by the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Gaming Economic Development or authorized to enter into agreements with RAC. In the event this grant is awarded, the resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $500,000 for this stated purpose. This grant does not require a local match. Bill number 2093. Resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to apply for a grant from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Gaming Economic Development Fund for up to $500,000 to provide for funding for Shadyside streetscape improvements and should the grant be awarded by RAC or authorized to enter into agreements with RAC. In the event this grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $500,000 for this stated purpose. Bill number 2094, 
Resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to apply for a grant from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Gaming Economic Development Fund for up to $500,000 to provide funding for development of the Green Boulevard should the grant be awarded by RAC or authorized to enter into agreements with RAC. In the event this grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $500,000 for this stated purpose. And Bill number 2095. Resolution authorizing the mayor of the city of Pittsburgh and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to apply for a grant from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Gaming Economic Development Fund for up to $500,000 to provide funding for the construction of a pedestrian bridge at Davis Avenue. And should the grant be awarded by RAC or authorized to enter into agreements with RAC, in the event this grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $500,000 for this stated purpose. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of the bills under our Public Safety, or I'm sorry, Public Works Services Committee. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, do we have further discussion on any of the bills? Okay, seeing none, the bills are now ready for final action. And all in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And would the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Kill Smith. Aye. Mrs. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. Eight eyes, zero nose, bills pass. Thank you very much. The bills having received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Our next committee is our Committee on Human Resources. Our chair is Councilwoman Darlene Harris. Thank you, Mr. Krause. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Harris presents bill number 2132, reported a committee on human resources for October 2nd, 2019. Bill number 2083, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Human Resources and Civil Service to enter into an agreement or agreements with National Testing Network for services relating to the administration of a fire barrier assessment for some not to exceed $49,875. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading in the title of this bill. Under our Committee on Human Resources, do we have further discussion on the bill? Seeing none, then the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And would the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Kill Smith. Aye. Mrs. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Eight eyes, zero nose, bills passed. Thank you very much. The bill, having received the legally required number of votes, has finally passed. Our next committee is our Committee on Urban Recreation. Our chair is Councilman Anthony Coghill. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Coghill presents bill number 2133, reported a committee on urban recreation for October 2nd, 2019. Bill number 2082. Resolution providing for an agreement or agreements with the Pittsburgh Board of Public Education for another vendor or another vendor chosen through the city bid process for the purpose of providing meals in connection with the 2019 and 2020 20 food service program in the Department of Parks and Recreation. Total cost shall not exceed $850,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You have heard the reading in the title of this bill under our Urban Recreation Committee. Do we have further discussion on this bill? Okay, seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And would the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. That one. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Killsmith. <clears throat> aye. Mrs. Strasberger? Aye. Mr. Krauss, President? Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. Thank you very much. The bill then, having received the legally required number of votes, is finally passed. Next, we have our Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management, and our Chair is Councilwoman Erica Strasberger. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilwoman. You. 
Councilwoman Erica Strasberger presents bill number 2134, reported a committee on innovation performance and asset management for October 2nd, 2019. Bill number 2098, resolution amending resolution 297 of 2019, a resolution amending an agreement with EDOX Technologies, LLC, for licensing services and maintenance and support services to update the scope of work at an additional cost not to exceed $16,263.89. Bill number 2099, resolution amending resolution number 769 of 2018, which had previously amended resolution number 479 of 2016, authorizing the mayor, the director of permits, licensing and inspections, the director of city planning, and the director of innovation and performance to enter into a second amended professional services agreement or agreement with Building Eye Inc. to provide, to purchase software and related support services that will create an interactive map for internal and public visual display of planning, permit, license, and violation data by adding $135,300 in compensation and raising the overall contract to an amount not to exceed $341,300. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of these bills under our Innovation Performance and Asset Management Committee. Is there further discussion on either of the bills? Then seeing none, these bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And would the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. <coughs> aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mrs. Kill Smith. Aye. Mrs. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. Eight ayes, zero noes. Thank you, madam. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, the bills then having received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Our final committee of the morning is our Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs. Our chair is Councilman Corey O'Connor. May I have Councilman uh, R. Daniel Lavelle for Councilman O'Connor. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman O'Connor presents bill number 2135, reported to Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs for October 2nd, 2019. Bill number 2085, resolution adopting plan revision to the city of Pittsburgh's official sewage facilities plan for 909 Liberty interior renovations at 909 Liberty Avenue. Bill number 2086, resolution authorizing the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh to acquire all the city's right, title, and interest, if any, in and to publicly owned properties known as Block 22G, Lots 1, 2, and 4 in the 21st Ward of the City, California, Kirkbrad Area, Council District Number 6, Affordable Residential Development. Bill Number 2087, Resolution Authorizing the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh to acquire all the city's right, title, and interest, if any, in and to publicly owned property known as Block 9S, Lot 253 in the 3rd Ward of the City, Council District Number 6, Expanded Parking Facility. Bill Number 2088, Resolution approving execution of a deed by and between the URA and City of Pittsburgh for the sale of Block 125S, Lot 125 in the 13th Ward, 9th Council District, Public Park. Bill number 2089, resolution authorizing the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh to acquire all the city's right, title, and interest, if any, in and to publicly owned properties known as Block 26N, Lots 51, 52, 53, and 54. Block 27A, lots 177, 78, 79, 180, 180A, 181, 82, 83, 84, 86, 87, 88, 89, 195, 196, 99, and 202, and a fifth ward of the City of Pittsburgh Affordable Townhouse Development. Bill number 2090. Resolution authorizing the URA of Pittsburgh to acquire all the city's right title and interest, if any, in and to the publicly owned property known as Block 22F, Lot 38, Belldale Street, in the 21st Ward of the City, 6th Council District, Future Development. 
Bill number 2091, resolution authorizing the URA of Pittsburgh to acquire all the city's right, title, and interest, if any, in and to publicly owned properties known as Block 27A, Lots 125 and 126 in the Fifth Ward of the City of Pittsburgh, Council District Number 6, Rehabilitation and New Construction, and Bill number 2117, resolution amending Resolution 42 of 2019, effective January 10, 2019, to reconcile the percentage of build-out funding assigned to the proposed City Housing Authority and shared space condominium units at 412 Boulevard of the Allies and to adjust the amounts assigned in the AE7 Professional Services Agreement accordingly. Thank you, Madam. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading of the title of the bills under our Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs. Is there further discussion on any of the bills? We have Councilwoman Gross followed by Councilwoman Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just like to um, remind members that we talked about Bill 2117 last week, um, which is the revision um, to the percentage of build-out funding assigned, and that I had a number of questions um, last week, and I voted no, and I'll be voting no again. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman uh, Harris, please. Yes. Uh, on 2117, uh, I still have a lot of questions. Uh, we have spent uh, $40 million plus, and I'll be voting no on this too. We have a number of employees that have not a raise uh, in years and years, and I could see this money going to a lot of other good than what's happening here. So, uh, and I asked for information and didn't receive it, so I'm a no vote. Thank you very much. And Councilwoman Kelsmith. Again, I'm going to be voting no. I voted no on the um, on the sale of the property, and so I'm going to be consistent with my vote. So thank, thank you. you. Okay. Seeing then no further discussion, these bills under our Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs are ready for final action. I would ask all in favor of the passage of the bills to vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed to vote no. And would the clerk then please call the roll. Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. No on Bill 2117. Aye on all other bills. Mrs. Harris. Uh, no on 2117, or 2117, I on the rest of the bills. Mr. Lavelle. Mrs. Harris, or Mrs. Kilsmith. No on Bill 2117, and I on the remaining of the bill, remainder of the bills. Mrs. Strasburger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Uh, <clears throat> aye. Oh, my voice. Eight I zero no's on bills 2085, 2086, 2087, 2088, 2089, 2090, and 2091. And five I's three no's on bill 2117. Thank you, then. The bills then, having received the legally required number of votes, have finally passed. That takes us into motions and resolutions. The chair has one brief meeting announcement that due to the Yom Kippur holiday beginning at sundown tonight, council will be holding our standing committee meeting this afternoon beginning at 1.30. There are no meetings scheduled for tomorrow, Wednesday, October the 9th. Uh, with that, I'll turn the floor over to Councilman Mikhail Smith. Thank you, um, Council President. I'd like to call for a uh, public hearing regarding the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy proposed tax. Um, we have a lot of residents that want their voice heard, so I know that time is of the essence, yeah. but I think we are still within that time frame. Can we please work on scheduling that today then, Council? Yes, I'd like to get scheduled right away. I think okay. the public wants an opportunity to speak, and I think we should, you know, they second. definitely, we should yeah. give it to them. Sure, so. okay. So and, we do have a motion and a second for a public hearing uh, regarding the resolution coming up on this November 5 ballot. Yeah. Uh, I believe we're in keeping, but let's right after this let's work together to see that we meet the, yeah, the I have requirements quite a few things i'd like to schedule uh, let's vote on this okay so yeah. we have a vo uh, motion in a second on the public hearing which is cable casting to be held here in council chambers all in favor Opposed uh, abstentions okay uh, motion for the public and i'd like passes. to have that in the evening as well because i think we want to make it be happy accommodate, accommodate the public a little bit better than we are sure um the second thing i'd like to call for a post agenda on is the um disposition of the um the publicly owned 
properties that we are selling in the city of Pittsburgh. The controller did a uh, audit of those properties, and I think the audit says one thing. Um, I actually have a, a different opinion. I think that a lot of times people don't realize. I see people, you know, that the, using this as as a way to say how horrible it is the council has such control over the properties what people don't realize is we are their voice we are their vote and if they if for any reason we're cut out of that process they're cut out of the process and it leaves the process to one person one individual politician versus nine or ten so I think that we really need to educate the public on this process and I think we need to call for a, uh, so I'd like to call for a post agenda, post -agenda. Okay. Second. And, second. and we have a second on that Without further discussion, all in favor, aye. Aye. Those abstentions, I'll be happy to work with you to schedule that as well, Councilman. Thank you. Councilman. You can Thank you. Uh, but let's meet after the meeting, can we Thank please? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So with that then, may I have a motion to excuse our absent member, approve our minutes, and adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye.